I don't know. Dave. Arta. Nice to meet you. King David, King Arta. <laughs> I like that. How would you like your haircut? I'm going to grow my hair out long, but I want to take some off the sides and some off the back. So I want it to be a little bit like thinner, I guess, around the sides. Okay. And shorter. And you can do some cutting on the top. We're so just going to do the ends just to clean the dead ends. Sure. So that'd it be, grows even. Yeah. And I think you prefer scissors. Yeah, definitely. See, that's the thing, guys. A lot of people, a lot of barbers, when a customer comes in with this type of request, right away they want to use the buzzer. In this case, I'm going to show you how to use the scissors and how to proper layer cut and take off the thickness. Enjoy the show. Let me wash your hand. It's a good example of this type of a hair, which I always tell my students, whenever a customer sits in my chair, I always like to say hello to the hair. You have to look out for the calyx. A lot of barbers I've seen in my experience, a customer has a mold and he doesn't tell you, he forgets about it. And while you're cutting the hair, I've seen it, that they cut the mold out. Also, for a lot of people have alopecia. That's the sickness when you have the hair doesn't grow. Also, sometimes customer forgets you and doesn't tell you about it. So you always have to look for those things first. We use individual comb for every customer here and give the comb to go. You do have a heavy colic in the back. What is colic? It's when the hair grows in a different direction. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I had a customer, he had 16 of them. Oh my god. Is that why it kind of goes straight up sometimes? Yeah, it gets so bushy and curly. Now, you do have a part, right? Yeah, I wear it kind of how I was wearing it when I came in, where around here it goes to the side. Way, yeah. It's also important to know where the part is, so when you cut it, you cut it the way it layers and lays down. So in this particular haircut, we're gonna start off with the top, just to clean up the ends because he doesn't want too much off. So we're just gonna do the ends to clean it so the hair grows healthy. This is overall right now just to give a shape. And then we're gonna texture it. Sometimes it looks easy when you cut it, but when you take scissors and a comb in your own hands, it's a little difficult to do. Your bangs, I will leave it natural as well. You do want to clean this part right here. A lot of barbers leave this, so the next haircut it becomes very long. Most of the job, it's your left hand. Your right hand is just the helper. Your left hand does all the jobs. Your left hand controls the angle of your comb. Now, I like to work with a small comb because it's easy to get by your ears and it's easy to take the hair out when you cut it. I do it also with a bigger comb, but it has to be different hairstyle. This is basically a, a layer that I'm doing right now. It's an old-fashioned classic technique, they call it. And you control the length by pulling or pushing the comb in if you want to take more hair. I like to do a layer first before I do the cut with the line so the hair lays more texture rather than a straight line. People like that more. Now this part, we see that he has a collar. So the main thing is not over cut it so it doesn't stick up. So we're going from top 
to bottom. And we're also going to use a little bit of a thinning shears to texture a little bit to take the volume down. How often do you cut your hair? Not a lot. It, it used to be really long. So I'm not very used to cutting it. So I don't cut it enough probably every five or six months. The technique around the ear. Be cautious. Try to be gentle. Let me take down around the ears. I'm also trying to do a natural rather than a straight line. Now, this is the tricky part right here again. If you overcut it, it's gonna stick up. And I also tell to my students is, when you cut hair, try to be gentle. It's a, it's a human being. Try to feel the skin so you don't scratch the skin. Try not to put your hand on top of the customer. A lot of barbers do that. It's not a show. Customer, customer has to enjoy. Same thing on this side. First, take the hair out. Simply. By turning your comb, it helps you to take all the hair out. You don't miss nothing. By doing this, you miss some hairs, they go back. But when you do this, it takes down all the hair out. So you cut it evenly. When you cut it around the ears, it has to be on the same angle the way you cut it on the other ear, so you have to check. It's also very important how you position your body, especially when you cut around the ears, your hands has to be flexible. I also do little exercises for my wrist, so your wrist has to be flexible in our job. We're gonna texture it now with, with the thinning shears. There's two ways to thin a hair. It's either with the grain or against the grain. In this case, I would do with the grain because if you do against the grain, there's a possibility that the hair will stick up. So this is with the grain. Not a lot. Now the sides you can do against the grain because it would lay down. Now also the trick a lot of barbers don't tell you is when you do the outline, which is going to be next, it's recommended to do it on a dry hair. Also, when you dry the hair, you will see all your mistakes if you did them. And unfortunately, we do make mistakes. So, I usually check the haircut on a dry hair, which I'm going to dry him after this. and go over it again to see if I left any lines or any, any mistakes that I made. This is just to get the hair out, the loose hair that I did with the thinning shears. Now you might want to check the top if it's even. And it's a little bit longer on this side right here. So we're going to trim a little bit because it's a little bit longer here. Here we go. And as you can see, 
he has the way it grows on the bottom it grows kind of light so we want to leave that I'm not gonna bring it up because you're gonna see his skin Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the outline. First, what I usually do is I go with the wall and I do number one, and I just go around the bottom, texturing and also fading a little bit the bottom because we all know that the bottom grows much faster than anything else. What do you prefer to, to have on your neck? Um, kind of see with the mirror, the background, I'm curious. Um, I think like pretty So you do want a line? Yeah, I think for the neck I'll do a line. Well, this type of haircut, guys, uh, it, either you can make a straight line or you can make it natural. But I don't think a taper unless the customer wants to because you have to go deep to the skin. And in his case, I don't recommend to do that because it grows very thin on the bottom as already. So now we're gonna outline it with the indies. Sideburns, you wanna leave them where they are, or just bring them up a little bit. I'm gonna bring them up a little, a little bit. bit. Also has to be very gentle with this tool because it's sharp. For those of you that want to do like a hairline cleanup at home for your husband, your wife, your son, is simple. If you have this type of a comb and you just want to do the outline straight to have straight lines, you can use the comb. Easy. Just turn it around, put it, and you go to outline it. This is your trick. This is like a measuring rule. Same thing here guys, you can put the uh, comb and you just go over it to make a li nice line. You see how straight it is? It's a little trick that I learned from one of my teachers. His name is Bruno Frustace, a lot of, a lot of you know him. He's a world champion, he has a salon in Brooklyn. Shout out also to Bruno Frustacci. Thank you for everything you did. And again, you can use the comb at home for you to have the straight line. It's easy as one, two, three. The trick also guys, when you do the outline, sometimes it looks straight, but when you take the cape out, because now his skin is kind of tied up, so the line looks straight. So I usually, when I open the cape, I will check again if the line is straight because his skin will loosen up. And that's when you also can check if the line is straight or not. There's going to be a few checkups. So we left some hair here. And again, you can see these mistakes when the hair is dry. You can take a little bit more from here. Yeah, don't be shy on the sides of the back. We have a little more room to thin this part out, and I'm gonna go wood against the grain.
as I said, as soon as I open this cape, the skin will loosen up. So I see this side is a little bit lower, which we're gonna correct. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, you don't mind if I put some living conditioner for you? Sure. I, I like, um, I'm just wondering if you have matte hair I have matte clay, I have fiber wax, palmate, and styling cream. There's only one, one, only one of those are matte, right? Matte, matte clay, yeah. Cool, I, I'm, oh, you like the flat? I'm pretty open to things, I just, I don't like it looking like I Not too shiny. Yeah, so I think I like matte. But yeah, you can put the living well, living conditioner. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna buy some matte too, because I have to. Oh. I'm curious how you do it. Well, I use my own brand, Living Conditioner. I, I created this product for my family first before I put it on the market. Well, I've been doing this since I was 14. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna use matte clay, which is not shiny. And again, don't put too much. Yeah. Because your hair is a little long. Yeah, I love my hair. It gives the moist to your hair because your hair is a little dry. Yeah, and it stays in. Yeah. You know, there's a saying in the barbershop field, how can you tell between a good haircut and a bad haircut? Seven days. <laughs> that's when, you know, the hair starts growing yeah. and that's when either you like it or you don't. Yeah. But my haircuts are sometimes very addictive. I am in, I'm hoping to about the next couple of months. So I'll be here. Enjoy it. Great, thank you so much.